Well, that was fast. Another quick off-season means another year of us NASCAR fans thanking our lucky stars that we don't have the same schedule as football. They now have to wait six months for a return. We only had to wait three. But it's been a busy few months, full of new acquisitions and new car models. Ooh, that dark horse looks cool. I wonder how they'll adapt it to their paint scheme. Flapping Flossum, what's that? With that, let's kick things off with the now two-time defending champion. How does this keep happening? Not saying they're not championship worthy, but I look back at the past two years and I could probably name three or four teams that have been consistently better. Hell, Trackhouse in their sophomore season showed more promise, yet these guys keep claiming all the crowns. Just goes to show that year-long consistency is inconsequential to the grand prize. Take Joey Logano. Enters Phoenix as far from the headlines as possible, yet still wins it all. Or how about our defending champ Ryan Blaney? Won just one race during the regular season and entered the playoffs seated in 12th, series champion. If you turn on the Jets at the right time, anything is possible. Which is why, for these two, I'll temper my expectations till September. Wait, there's another Penske car? Oh yeah, Austin Sendrick exists. Yeah, last year was one to forget for the two and his fans alike. For whatever reason, the Deuce spent all of last year a step behind his teammates, and while he's safe for now, it won't be long till he's on the hot seat. Time to find another gear. For these guys, it's just time to hit the reset button. For Kyle Larson, it was a missed chance. For William Byron, it was a missing ring. For Chase Elliott, it was a few missed races. And for Alex Bowman, it was just missing. This team isn't going anywhere anytime soon, but that should give them all the more reason to lock back in, because as far as I'm concerned, last year was a bust. For Elliott and Bowman, they just need to win again. For Byron and Larson, get back to the championship by any means necessary. It's probably a good thing that being the leader in wins, including a landmark 300th, was still somehow disappointing, but it just goes to show how high the bar has been set, and it won't be any easier to clear this time around. Hendrick has a tough task ahead of them in their 40th go. Let's just keep Chase Elliott away from the slopes this time. After last year, this team's kinda all over the place. On paper, they're contenders, favorites even, but in practice, it's just not translating. Denny Hamlin continues to come close to the Holy Grail, but with back-to-back -back Martinsville playoff exits, it's getting harder and harder to make the case for DH. On the other hand, Christopher Bell's back-to-back -back Championship 4 appearances should be encouraging, but once he's on that stage, he finds the lights are brighter than expected. And with his so-so regular season performances the past few years, he's another one that may have to wait a while. Now, the namesake may be a different case, because while he fell short of the postseason, he's still shown a good amount of promise. The season hasn't even started, and he's already fighting Joey Logano. If that doesn't say Cup Series contender, then I don't know what does. That being said, he's also been getting testier, more hot-headed, and all I have to say is tie, tread lightly. You made enough enemies out of the pay-to-play drivers in Martinsville. Now imagine genuine talent, some of the best this country has to offer, all gunning for your head. It's not an enviable situation. Just ask Brad Keselowski. And if Ty keeps the same cavalier attitude he had during his Xfinity Championship, we may see new meaning brought to the word consequences. consequences. As for Truex, well, I don't really want to talk about it. I have a feeling my driver is reaching the end of his career, and with how last year ended, all I want is redemption, and I hope he and his team feel the same way. CPR has been administered, now don't choke again. What a damn whirlwind. Like Trackhouse before them, these guys were the ultimate shocker of 2023. It started with a good first half to the regular season, so good that they were both comfortably positioned to make the playoffs weeks in advance. And if that was the end of it, it still would have been a huge leap forward. But then came the true coming out party. Richmond, Michigan, Daytona. Three wins in five weeks for Chris Buescher. And to top it all off, a deep playoff run that no one saw coming. This guy is officially a title threat. And as long as he picks up where he left off, I see no reason why this Texan couldn't prosper and go all the way. As for his boss, BK did pretty good too, but the monkey on his shoulder is getting harder to ignore. He still hasn't won a race as an owner-driver, and while a championship is the ultimate goal, he needs to get back to victory lane first. It's now been almost three years since he took his last checkered flag, and now 40 years old and not getting any younger, the clock's ticking louder and louder. At least he has job security, I guess. I want to give the same praise to these guys, but championship contenders? That may be ambitious, which is a shame, because I think Tyler Reddick is plenty worthy of copping the cup. Ran well, won some races, made it all the way to the round of eight, and then just stalled out. Like the kid at K1 Speed stuck with the bum cart, he just couldn't keep up. Though given his performances through the rest of the season, I think that has more to do with the car than the driver. If they want a shot at the title, they need to upgrade, and hopefully that shiny new race shop will do just that. 
As for Bubba, I have mixed opinions. He had more than his fair share of shots to win last year, but each and every time fell flat when it mattered most. Being a fan of his has grown quite painful, because the one season he feels more capable of winning than ever before, he doesn't. He needs to be better in the clutch, pun intended, because if his teammate keeps speeding ahead, pun intended, he might end up being left in the dust, pun intended. To talk about RCR's 2023, we have to split it in two parts. There was the first half, a jovial time for both the driver and team that would see redemption in more ways than one. Then there was the second half, just meh. Don't get me wrong, it was good to see a reinvigorated Kyle Busch, but if the eight team starts this season like they ended the last, they may be in trouble. The wins were nice, but they ended the season with six DNFs and an average finish of 15th, far from championship caliber. With both Bush's age and disillusionment with the sport growing, their window of contention might be closing faster than they think, and they're certainly not getting any help from the Silver Spoon. In fact, I'm so confident he's going to have another down year, I won't even waste time talking about him. Thank you, next. This team is like a bloated pufferfish, it just keeps on expanding. From joining MotoGP to forming alliances with Spire and Colleg to signing big sponsors like Bush Beer and Wendy's, the house just keeps on growing. So much so that I think they forgot they're a NASCAR team. I wouldn't go so far as to say that last year was a step back, but it certainly wasn't a step forward. Daniel Suarez went from contender to placeholder alarmingly quick, and while he was the catalyst behind this team's rise, the seat is getting warm underneath him. He might have two years left on his contract, but Justin Marks knows what his team is capable of, and when push comes to shove, he can't tolerate any more failure. It would suck for Suarez, but that's racing. He needs to return to his 2022 form, because while he struggles, his teammate continues to show the way. 23 wasn't anything spectacular for Ross Chastain, but spectacular is relative. After all, trying to follow up the Hale Melon is like Amy Schumer following up Dave Chappelle, but Ross did his best and still eked out a few victories, including a shocker in the final race that had everyone thinking, why couldn't he do that a year ago? Still, it was a much needed momentum boost for a team facing some serious question marks. And now armed with the best sponsor in racing and a continuously growing fan base, Ross is winning over more hearts than races, though it would probably help if he won some more races as well. For every team I've mentioned thus far, there's been at least some shred of optimism. This will not be the case for SHR. They damn near single-handedly broke Kevin Harvick's back last year with the carry job they forced him into. And now he's gone, leaving… well, what else is there? Chase Briscoe could make a splash, provided he avoids getting any more landmark-level penalties. And Ryan Priest could be better in his second year, but that bar's pretty damn low to begin with. Josh Berry's proven himself to be a superstar talent in the Xfinity series, but in his limited start so far, those skills have not translated to the cup level. And then there's the straggler. After falling under the sword at Legacy, Noah Gragson will now be carrying on the Danica Patrick Legacy by driving the 10 car. And his return from disgrace comes fully equipped with a shamefully mid paint scheme and a noticeable lack of sponsorship. Now, I can't throw too much shade on these guys, as we have seen them find success in their own separate ways, but I have a feeling that when their powers combine, they will create the, the worst, worst NASCAR, NASCAR team, team on, on the, the planet. planet! Trademark pending. If you take last year at face value, Legacy did not leave much of a legacy. Instead, they left much to be desired, but while they struggled to get results on the track, they've been making some big moves off of it. In addition to the 14 combined championships of Richard Petty and Jimmy Johnson, they'll be adding one more by bringing in Matt Kenseth as a competition advisor. And they've also found a permanent replacement for the 42, one of the hottest Xfinity drivers from last year, John Hunter Nemechek, who's also bringing along his manufacturer, creating two unholy sights that we never thought we'd see. Richard Petty's 43 and Jimmy Johnson driving Toyotas. Whew. Add to that a litany of new sponsors and you have yourself an almost brand spanking new race team which is good, because all three of these guys deserve a comeback. Anything to get the stink off from last year. There are other teams I could see making some noise, but aren't deserving of their own transitions. One of these teams is the defending Daytona winners and JTG Doherty, who will have about six opportunities to win this season. Beyond that, I don't like their chances, and the same goes for Colleg and Rick Ware, who now have their own super speedway serpents in Daniel Hemrick and Justin Haley. Not a lot has changed at front row, which may be for the best given Michael McDowell's road course chops, but I must say, I don't know what they see in Todd Gilland. I get that he's still young, but even in proven equipment, he tends to underperform. And you could say the same for Harry Burton at the Wood Brothers, now entering year three of the quietest tenure in NASCAR. Both of these guys are now in contract years, and if they can't turn things around, they might find themselves job hunting in 2025. As for Spire, things have gotten even more interesting. In addition to Corey LaJoy, their lineup will now include Carson Hosevar, fresh off of committing capital murder, and Zane Smith, who may or may not just be driving the unofficial third trackhouse car. 
Tack on a few starts from the likes of Jimmy Johnson, David Reagan, and Shane Van Gisbergen, and good old BJ McLeod, who I may or may not have forgotten while writing the script, and we now have a complete field for the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series. And as for the playoffs, I won't lie, I'm a bit stumped. Last year when I predicted who would make the postseason, I painstakingly dissected the entire schedule race by race to determine who would have the best shot, and you see what good that did me. So this year I'm taking a different approach, throwing shit at the wall and hoping it sticks. Let's do this. Like last year, I have Larson and Byron getting in handedly, and in a complete turnaround from last year, I have Elliott completing the comeback and getting in as well. Then we have the whole Gibbs Brigade, Hamlin, Truex, Bell, and while I dread the day this happens, I do think this is the year that Ty Gibbs picks up win number one. Next we have the defending champ, Ryan Blaney, and the defending defending champ, Joey Logano, and then the RFK duo, who hopefully will both find victory this season. With their late surge of momentum last year, I don't see why Reddick, Bubba, or Ross will be slowing anytime soon, and filling out the final two spots are, are you ready? Chase Briscoe and Josh Berry. Yes, I know I've become the poster child for SHR slander, but the last time Tony Stewart declared a state of emergency for his team, they won more races and got two of their cars in the playoffs. I believe the same will happen this time around, and it better, because both financially and morally, they can't afford to have another season like the last. As for the exclusions, you have Alex Bowman, who, while absent for a handful of races last year, was still noticeably off the pace of his compatriots. I don't see this year getting any better, and I believe the same to be true for Daniel Suarez and Austin Sindrick. Neither have shown playoff-worthy pace or confidence, and while I hope they can return to contention, I don't think 24 is their year. As for McDowell and Spinhouse, last year's wins were nice, but they weren't indicative of playoff-performing prowess. And then the big one. This might just be me doubling down, but fuck it, I don't think Kyle Busch is going to come anywhere close to where he did last year. Call me crazy, call me delusional, but one day he's going to win his last race. Hell, he might have already. While RCR is one of the greatest teams in NASCAR history, I don't think they have the pieces to give Kyle what he needs. Now watch him win the Daytona 500. And there you have it, my picks for the 2024 NASCAR playoffs. Racing gods, 